Along the shores of Lake Superior in Grand Marais, Minnesota, is the North House Folk School, where traditional northern crafts are taught. Today, Marcy McIntyre is providing instruction on how to make a pair of bead embroidered moccasins. I uh, started doing beadwork at the age of 10 years old, and I've been making moccasins for about 20 years now, so we're having a moccasin class here today. It's about 10 years since I started working at North House Folk School as a contractor. I teach several classes a year, and this is the only institution that has invited me to, to teach. And um, I, I wish I could, um, Teach, teach more people. I used to teach um, what they call the scout boot um, with, it's kind of a, we would call it a work, work moccasin where uh, the cuff wraps around the, the ankle and it's, um, it's maybe about three or four inches up, up the ankle and you, you, tie it, you tie the cuff around your ankle with with a long um, um, ties, like shoelaces, and that way the the sticks and stones and that sort of thing won't get into your shoe when you're walking or when you're working outside. So that was a more practical type. This style I'm making is more of a fancy dress type, which you would wear with a traditional outfit at powwows. For the past 10 years, Marcy has taught up to six courses per year, and the number of students has varied between two and 10 per class. She has taught how to make beaded doilies, deerskin mittens with Anishinaabe-style beadwork, and beaded baby moccasins. Marcy is known and highly regarded for her beadwork. I started out with the loom work, um, loom wo woven beadwork. I, we make our own looms and we do our own designs. Uh, many times those are geometric designs, and the geometric designs are the oldest designs, but it's all personalized. It's whatever the artist in, intends. And so that's what we're doing here. Everybody uses their own designs. Uh, I give them a few hints of how to, to do it, how, how I do it. So I started with the bead embroidery, is which we're doing here, making medallions and other, and other objects. My mother helped me with um, advising me with different techniques and different styles, but basically it's um, a type of art you learn by watching. One of the things that I wanted to create was a bandolier bag, and so I had to study those things in museums. And, but then other things were, were at hand where I would go to powwows and, and see the, the beadwork there and I would get inspiration from that. Design-wise, what inspires me is the fact that we're um, celebrating the plant life. And we do that because um, the, the plant life was responsible for many things in, in our way of life a long time ago. Uh, the birch tree provided the transportation, the housing, the cooking and cooking utensils and storage utensils. There was also the food that the plant life provided. Many of these plants grow, grow in the spring that we use for soups. You can dry them too. There's herbs and then there's also medicine. So we're celebrating the the plant life. And so it, it's really significant to me because a lot of people, especially historians, um, have a misconception about our culture. They think of us as having um, ru ru run around with a, a breech cloth around the waist in case, case of a male and, you know, doing big game hunting, whereas actually it was the plant life that fueled our existence. And in the spring and summer, I go out into the woods, I go up on the Grand Portage Trail, and or actually I just look out the window on, on my deck, and I, I draw the, the, um, the f floral patterns that I see, the, the fol foliate uh, patterns, and I, I sketch them, and then when I want to make a design, I go through my file of sketches and decide 
what I want to do. And so I, I look at the designs I've done previously and I just sit down with a pencil and piece of paper and start drawing until I find something that I like depending on the object I'm making. Marcy has taught in her home village of Grand Portage, but she has not done that in a number of years, and, um, and that has caused her some concern about the future. We come from this tradition, and um, it's just the way it's done. I taught um, at the grade school and then also at the National <laughs> Park Service, but it has been uh, many years now um, those children are now in their 30s. When I was in my 20s, most people in Grand Portage had some kind of hand work or something they made that they ex excelled at. Some people made, made drums or they made knives or uh, braided rugs, uh, birch bark baskets, beadwork, jewelry, but you don't see that anymore. People aren't making things that much and I, I hope we'll get this back. I would like them to, them to learn about their, their cultural history because we come from a great, great heritage and it's nothing to, to be ashamed of. The society in the United States is permeated with um, all kinds of negative in it, images of our people and in fact our people um, have lived a very positive life. One of the reasons for doing this kind of work was um, to um, eliminate, p put an end to the cultural genocide our people face. I wish I could um, teach, teach more people.